Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Now, last year, remember, the Colombo economic pundits were telling us that uh, Sri Lanka's addiction to money printing was one of the reasons that Sri Lanka's economy was in such dire straits. I mean, they're right to a certain extent. But remember how they accused the former government, the former governor, and the rest of the uh, rest for printing money left, right, and center. The current governor, who was brought in, in my opinion, to default the country, said during that crisis, we will stop doing that. No more money printing, strict restrictions on that matter. In fact, the IMF clearly outlined no more money printing as well, because it negatively impacts the economy, and that's a fact. But here's the raw data. Treasury bills issued to the central bank by the government, referred to as this money printing business, uh, to the value of 1,206 billion rupees were made in the 551 days since the central bank's COVID-driven monetary accommodation of the government from the 13th March 2020 to 14th uh, September 2021, while Professor uh, W.D. Lakshman was the governor. Now, as a result, the Treasury bill's holdings of the central bank uh, increased to 1,284 billion rupees by 14 September 2021. Now, thereafter, during uh, Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral's term from the 15th of September 2021 to the 5th of April 2022, the Treasury bill holdings of money printing increased by 446 billion rupees to reach 1,730 billion rupees. But as per the latest data, the total central bank holdings of government treasury bills and bonds have reached a phenomenal 2,839 billion rupees by 22nd September 2023. Now, on that basis, money printing under the current governor, Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe, has reached 1,171 billion rupees, even after a nearly three-fold increase in T-bills and bond rates since assuming office, and not paying external debt of about $7,000 million so far. Meaning, we printed money, but we didn't even uh, you know, pay our debt. In addition, the central bank indicators reveal that money printing on uh, a single day, uh, specifically on the 21st of September 2023, recorded a staggering 334 billion rupees. Let's actually uh, try to understand uh, why Sri Lanka needs to immediately get rid of this bad habit and focus uh, more on, on credible solutions that would help us to get out of this crisis. Let's cross over to the data board. That's where we find economist Imran Furkan. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, thank you very much for being here once again. Uh, I understand uh, your lovely wife was uh, in Sri Lanka for a short visit from Australia. She was. And, uh, uh, and she ran back after spending, what, one week with you? Uh, well, actually, she extended her stay, so I think it's a very positive side. <laughs> anyway, Imran, uh, explain to us why this money printing business is going to keep us down in the depths. Yeah, thanks, Mahesh. So, um, you know, um, the popular term money printing looks at really, you know, treasury, uh, CBSL, treasury bill and bond holdings, um, uh, but it's a bit of a broader term, and I'll explain that. But first, the worrying thing, um, you know, between this one day, uh, you know, we've been printing uh, just over 300, uh, you know, third, uh, almost 340 billion rupees, which is which is something we promised to stop, right? Um, now, of course, this does not necessarily mean uh, there is an overall increase in in what we call. Uh, you know, what we call money printing in an official way. So in a technical term, the governor is right. Uh, that would be reserve money, right? Now, reserve money is, is a complicated thing that includes, uh, you know, the treasure, central bank holding of treasury bills and bonds. Um, it also includes other things like open market operations where, you know, uh, um, securities could be bought and sold, uh, central bank holdings of foreign currency, um, and also the changing of assets, uh, domestic assets uh, held by the central bank as well. So if you look at from an overall perspective, technically, uh, what he says is true because, um, you know, after a big jump uh, in, uh, you know, 2020, um, from 2020 to 2021, 
where we uh, you know actually printed 344 billion rupees um, there's only a smaller jump between 2021 and 2022 um, which was about 44 billion rupees right and in 2023 so far and uh, just keep an eye out uh, for this figure of 1. Point, uh, you know 1.35 trillion uh, rupees um, you know if you if you um, look at the um, uh, figure up to um, you know, end of 2022 and, and also um, up to end of July 2023. Now, this is the latest figures we have uh, from, from the central bank. I think August and September will come. Um, reserve money is at 1.37 trillion. So, not a huge amount overall has been printed. Um, but still, it's, 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 neg it's not the way to go. It's not the way to go. And the way to go is simple, right? We need to not print, or the, the central bank should not be financing government spending. This is where, where this holding of the treasury bills, uh, you know, have increased dramatically. That should be done by uh, either tax revenue going up or expenses coming down, which I think is what we need to focus on. Not, not create these you know, fake money uh, exactly. into the system, exactly. which is uh, impacting uh, negatively very quickly. Uh, Imran, uh, um, I mean, right now, Sri Lanka, uh, I mean, even if you look at the United States, they're doing the same thing. Yes. Uh, they're printing left, right and center because the US dollar is a, a, a dominating currency all around the world and they are the only uh, country that can do um, the printing. So uh, what can we learn from that if we are to get out of this crisis because there is an impending crisis in the United States as well uh, if they continuously keep doing that but their economy is very stronger than ours but uh, for us in order to get out you, I mean, you just uh, indicated a couple of things, but what is the other thing that we really need to focus on? Yeah, I think just to correct you on one thing, the US may be printing money at record levels. It's actually reduced the amount of money they're printing. Uh, they still are, but the, you know, the pace has reduced and they're increasing interest rates, which we are not doing. We are actually reducing interest rates. So the, a little different from, from what we are doing and therefore their currency is quite strong now. Right? What we need to focus on is a couple of things. Either we need to reduce the size of you know, the government and government spending, which we are not doing. Um, absolutely no action has been taken to spend, you know, reduce the size of government or the spending. And we need to also increase our revenues, right? Uh, either tax revenues or other revenues that are coming in. I think we are not focusing on both of them. Even the IMF, after its recent review, they just left. Uh, they, have, they have some concerns that we have not met our revenue target. So I think we need to increase uh, you know, revenue and also cut costs at the same time, preferably cut costs faster than we increase our revenue, um, uh, uh, you know, and that, that without you know, taxing us a lot. Um, but we cannot keep, uh, you know, the central bank exactly. cannot keep funding the government expenditure. Exactly. All right, economist Imran Furkan, thank you. Now, I want to bring in the uh, former governor of the central bank, Ajit Nimad Kabral, who has also been accused of this bad habit. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Governor, for joining me and taking the time to speak to us. Now, when you printed money, all hell broke loose, at least that's what the economic pundits of uh, Colombo said. However, as soon as you left, money printing magically became something good. And the current central bank administration seems to be enjoying doing that, just that. Now explain to us, Governor, we know this activity is negatively uh, impacting the economy. What else can we actually look into right now amidst a thick economic crisis? Thank you, Mahesh, for having me on your program. It's always good to be with you. Now, if you look at money printing per se, during the time of the COVID, every single central bank in every part of the world had to print money. That was because of the fact that every country had a loss in revenues because of the lockdowns, because of the economic activity being curtailed. Every government had a shortfall in their revenues and that had to be compensated with the central banks providing them with some liquidity. Now, during the time that I was the governor, it had to happen. And the research of many central banks all over the world, including the Reserve Bank of India, showed very clearly that in times of crisis of that nature, when there were economic contractions, that the impact of additional treasury bill holdings of the central bank did not negatively impact the inflation. So, we had a very interesting situation at that time where we had to provide with liquidity and at the same time the provision of liquidity itself 
did not lead to the normal occurrence of the inflation going up. However, after I left, the impact of COVID had reduced drastically and there was in fact no COVID impact at all. But at that time, the, then, the new administration had increased the interest rates. They had increased, the government had increased the taxes manifold. So there were new revenues coming in. They were not paying the foreign debt. And the local debt was also uh, being uh, uh, accumulated with the treasury bill holdings being taken by the government. So there was a very different set of scenarios. And even, even in, under those circumstances, we found that the money printing had gone up tremendously. In fact, the new administration so far has printed something like 1.2 trillion rupees. And as you say, the people are not too concerned about it because the people who were concerned when during my term, when we printed around 446 billion, they were required. You're, you cannot find them. They are not saying Cabral printed 446 billion and now the current administration is printing 1.2 trillion. They are very quiet about it. I don't know why, but that's the truth. So the long and short of this whole exercise is that money printing at the current time is actually not in the best interest of the country because there is no COVID and you have to manage without, without this kind of support, which is what we did. Up, right up to the in, in my nine years as the Treasury Bank Governor, there was not a single cent that was there at the time that I left as uh, Treasury Bill Holdings. So it can be done, but nowadays we find that it is not being done, but nobody seems to be too concerned about it. Indeed, uh, Governor, the IMF along with uh, many economic pundits say that 2024 is going to be a uh, year of recovery, um, the year that Sri Lanka's economy will bounce back. Your thoughts? You see, Mahesh, we are seeing huge interest rates today. It has come down a little bit, but at the current interest rates, I don't think you are going to see any growth. With the current default status that Sri Lanka is having, I don't see anyone coming and investing in Sri Lanka. With the current political turmoil that we are seeing, with so many different factions pulling in so many different directions, I don't think even the local investors would be investing in order to spur growth in our country. With the current IMF program, which is so stringent, with huge taxes, with huge burdens being cast upon the people, I don't think we are going to see any current local activity which will also spur growth. We are seeing also a huge brain drain, the likes of which, which we have never seen in the past. And if you think that with those conditions that you're going to see growth, I think you're really, really optimistic. Absolutely. All right. We have to leave it at that. Former Governor of the Central Bank, Ajit Nivad Kapra. Thank you very much, sir. A short break now. More State of the Nation right after this.